Hi there and welcome to another craft new tutorial. Today I am going to be painting a sunset silhouette. As always I'm using acrylic paints but today it's just going to be red, yellow, white and black, so quite simple. You're going to need two paint brushes, one large and one small, kitchen roll, a cup of water for about halfway and some parchment cling film or this is tissue paper that you can quite noisy, crumple up. We'll come to that later and of course your canvas. If you're using paper or cardboard, that's absolutely fine. It's a sunset silhouette, so we're going to go landscape. You will be able to make this completely your, completely your own if you want to freestyle, um, and that will be the silhouette, so at the end. So we're going to do the sunset first and then move on to the silhouette on top. Okay, let's go. So we're going to be using our biggest brush to start with and starting with our yellow paint we are just going to dab along here as so and just try to cover as much of the canvas as possible. Don't worry too much about covering the bottom part, the silhouette's going to come to about here. You don't need to draw it out, you can kind of roughly draw it with your brush. Maybe add a bit more water to really get it to flow to the other side of the canvas. And again, it doesn't need to cover it all just for now because we're gonna then get our red and just not as far down as we went with the yellow. We're gonna do three dots, six. Like this, you're just gonna work into the background slowly. You want to use big sweeping brush strokes to really blend the colours and they should be mixing directly on the canvas so you should be getting a really nice rich orange. I'm actually going to get a bit more red and just put it right at the top just in the corners and then I'm going to cover the top side and the, uh, and the side of my canvas. It's up to you whether you do this and if you're using paper obviously it's not going to be an option. Um, a good little trick is to use masking tape and if you just make a square with masking tape and peel it off, it should make a really nice crisp line on the paper. If you find that the paint isn't blending very well, just add a little bit more water. It's acrylic, so it will dry quite quickly, so you do need to work quickly to get that blend. We're actually covering the sides a little bit as well. We're going to put our sun around here, so we want the majority of the yellow and the lighter oranges to be around this section and the further you get away from the sun to be a bit darker and a bit redder. I'm now just getting red set red and putting it straight on and just kind of putting lines across and then I'm going to blend those into the background but try to keep the lines slightly visible. And then using your brush strokes, if you go in the opposite direction, we're gonna we're basically trying to get the, the effect of sun coming through clouds. And it doesn't need to be too exact, but the differing brush strokes do give that that effect. I'm actually gonna get a bit more yellow. I've used all of mine. I'm gonna get my yellow and dab it straight on here, and I'm gonna start hinting to where my sun's gonna go. Just gonna be here. Can you see? So I am not yet putting in any definition of the sun, and in fact, it's not gonna be a very defined sun because it is seeping through the clouds. Um, but we're just gonna hint to where it is for now, and then overlay with white. Okay, and while it's still wet, I get my white. All still using the same brush stroke, but uh, the same brush. And just dab it mainly in this section and around the sun. So as you can see I've just done that and I'm going to blend it in quite quickly still keeping these that sort of line with the brush strokes. When you're now going to make the effect of the clouds you don't want your brush to be too wet so now might be a good time to dab it out on the kitchen roll and then you can start to blend really nicely when it's slightly just a damp brush. Okay, 
again just working into the horizon line so getting really light down here and just working into the sun and not going as wide so the lighter you get you should keep it still quite contained I'm going to add in a little bit more red and a bit of a deeper red um, so we will be adding black but not for now I'm just going to get my red the remaining red that I've got and try to just use it all not obviously going over the sun just going around the sun blotting it at first avoiding the horizon and then we're just gonna start blending it in with those sideways brush strokes and these bits really can come quite far across the sun because the sun's meant to be coming through the clouds you do want to get some of the red lines crossing through it if you run a dry brush just really gently across the brush strokes from the sun. The back, the, the sun should still be slightly wet, the brighter paint. You just kind of do these outward motions as if the sun was here and you're going straight out from the sun, really gently. Okay, and while it's still wet, Get your big brush and the tiniest bit of black, not much at all, just on a couple of corners. So my bits are just going to go, you can barely see it, here, 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 but really, really tiny bits of black and we just want a little bit more depth to our um, sunset and the black will help do that. And if it does look a little bit too black, which mine does, I'm going to grab the red. just directly over those black bits and black like red is a really strong pigment so you don't need much at all as you can see it just adds a little bit of a darker depth and we're just going to go right on the outskirts with that same technique now's a good opportunity to make sure all your sides are covered so if you just keep working in more and more white and blending it out to cover the lines coming across. As you can see, I'm now ready to let mine dry uh, before starting the silhouette. It should take about 10 to 15 minutes to dry. A good little trick is to use a hairdryer if you're being impatient, or to fan it if you're outside, it should dry quite quickly. Or just wait 10 to 15 minutes, um, not a long time, and then just make sure when you come back it's touch dry. Right, so now you have your dried background and your sunset and you're happy with it, we're going to do the silhouette on top, which is just going to be completely black. We don't need any other colours, we're going to be using a small paintbrush to start with. At this point you can kind of freestyle and do whatever sort of silhouette you want. I am going to do something for Father's Day, so a, a big elephant and a little elephant, which could also work for Mother's Day. The great thing about once you've got your background and you work on with your silhouette, you can really make it relevant to anything. Just drawing a very small black line at the bottom to outline where the ground's going to go. And I'm going to draw a tree, some leaves, and then we're going to start our silhouette of the, the elephants. For the tree, the general rule is the closer to the centre of the tree you are, the bigger the trunk will be, and then the branches start to thin out as they get further apart. So we are going to start with just doing one line, one crisp line down to the ground and it gets slightly thicker at the bottom. And we're actually just going to have two main um, secondary branches and then a curly one over here. You might need a bit of water on your thin brush to make sure the lines are crisp. And if you get the excess paint off and sort of thin it out, you should be able to get quite a thin line. From these two branches, this one is going to have another one coming up here, another one coming up here, and this is going to go out there. And it's actually going to go off the page, or around the side of the page. So here are my main branches for now, and off of all of these, I'm just going to create even smaller ones. As you can see, I've added on quite a few branches, even small ones coming off of the larger, larger ones. I 
Right, now we're going to turn our canvas upside down. I'm trying to get a really sharp line with our black. We are going to draw quite random grass, but long stemmed grass. If you water down your paint quite a lot and use quite sweeping actions rather than trying to draw it slowly, you should be able to get those lines. And even side rays, just however you feel comfortable making the sharpest lines. Some of our plants are going to have little bulbs on the end. Okay, now we're going to start with our elephants. I also think giraffes would work quite well. It's an African sunset, so giraffes, elephants, even lions might work quite nicely. And I want to do one large one here and one small one. You can draw it out if you feel more comfortable, or even print off a stencil that you want to work from. I am going to trust myself. It's always better to start smaller with the body and then kind of work on top of it. So I haven't done the trunks at the moment, this is what mine look like. You can basically just do either the smaller one first and replicate that, a larger version. I find it easier to do the larger one first and then just kind of copy what I've just done on a smaller scale. I actually want my larger elephant to be touching the tree, so I'm just going to draw one more branch so that the, the trunk can reach one of the branches. And then we are going to get our really crumpled up piece of tissue paper. I'm actually going to half mine, um, so I don't want too much. And crumple it into a really tight ball and then sort of bring it apart a little bit when you're happy with kind of how it looks, we get our black paint and just, with quite a bit of water, just spread it out on our palette so that we've got quite a nice base. And then we're gonna get the black. Might be a good idea just to practice on a piece of paper if you have one beforehand. I'm just gonna practice on the side of my plate. Yeah, I quite like that. Maybe a bit smaller, it's always best to start off a bit smaller. And then just around the outskirts of the tree, we're going to really lightly blot it. It should give a really nice effect of leaves and quite harsh dry leaves. So the this gets the really nice sharp angular edge and quite random edges and it's quite fun to use. And just if you get the tiniest bit, just really kind of squish it in tightly and then you can get the bits just the smaller branches, so in the middle of the tree, but we mainly want all of the leaves to be at the top. Okay, and now the finishing touches. I'm going to put that away. I've made quite a mess. And we're going to paint on a couple of birds. So this is just like a bit of a fancy B, or even an M, depends on how you want your birds to look. You can do a mixture of them. I'm literally just getting the edge of my paintbrush and dotting it in two different directions, meeting in the middle. And they can be different sizes, so if they're larger, obviously they're going to look like they're closer together, they're closer to you, and if they're smaller, they'll be further away. I'm also now just going to go over a few bits of the tree and just redefine bits of my grass. and there we have it my final masterpiece i hope you enjoyed watching and if you did paint along please post your masterpieces online so i can have a look and reshare the creativity if you have any requests for future tutorials let me know yeah i hope you enjoyed it thank you again for watching and i will be back next week <laughs>